Welcome to the Beyond 20 Sharewell tutorial series. This is part two of our video series on how to unleash Sharewell by using parameterized PowerShell scripts for integration with other systems. And in this case, we're going to show you how to use a one step in Sharewell to run a parameterized PowerShell script that will transfer attachments from a Sharewell business object record to an integrated system using the REST API in Sharewell and the REST API of the integrated system, in this case, JIRA. Now let's take a look at the one step we use to run our PowerShell script. The one step will run from the incident association and it has two actions, the run a PowerShell script action and create a child uh, journal action that records the results of our uh, script. The PowerShell script is going to run from the trusted agent if we were on a hosted system, or if you're on a prem or on a sandbox, you will not run it from the trusted agent. It will then either run from the Sharewell server or from the desktop client if it's run manually. So automated processes will run from the server or the trusted agent if it's hosted. So now we're going to break down the calling run a program action in the one step. So run a PowerShell script needs the fi full file name for PowerShell. However, if you're not running from a trusted agent, you can just put PowerShell exe in here. You'll then need the start in folder, which again has to exist and has to have write, uh, read write access to the account that Sharewell is run from. Our command line arguments are very important. The execute policy needs execution policy needs to be bypass. The window style needs to be hidden. The file is then the actual script that you're going to run, followed by a space delimited list of tokens that are going to act as your parameters in your script. Next, we need to make sure that we have the following checkboxes set. We need to make sure we wait for the program to end before continuing. We also need to set a timeout of at least 90 seconds to allow it to complete. You can set that up to 180 seconds if you desire. And then we need to store our exit code as a as the PS result. And then we're going to run it with no window. Now, in order to handle our result as an error message or a success message, when this comes back out, we're going to need to store that as a stored value. So we're going to add one more action here that just simply sets our PowerShell exit code stored value. And we're going to set that to that error code that comes back from the PowerShell script. And if you'll recall from part one of this series, when the exit code, code comes back, it will be one of several different numbers. Hopefully it's a zero, which means it's successful. And then we'll record that in our journal when we've uh, run the script. So right here, in our details, we say that the name of the one step transfer attachments to JIRA. The results are the exit code and the message is this expression that gives a different set of text based on the exit code. So if exit code zero is completed successfully, if it's any one of these other numbers 495 through 498, we have a specific error message. And if it's any other code other than those five, it will simply say an unknown error, something went wrong. Please see the logs for details. And again, the uh, PowerShell script does have a log that it creates. All right, now let's go take a look at how we call this. So here we have an incident. It's got several attachments of several different file types. We've got some images, we've got a, a spreadsheet, uh, looks like we've got a PowerPoint file, a Visio file, and a document. So just about every type of file you might conceive uh, as being attached to an incident. And we have a one step that we created that's very simple. We're calling it Transfer Attachments to JIRA. So we go ahead and we're just going to run this. So you notice that uh, each one of those files was downloaded to our C colon temp folder. And now if we go over and we refresh our uh, JIRA issue,
you'll see that each one of the files has been uploaded successfully into the JIRA issue. Well, I hope this video has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on ShareWell, ITIL, or ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20, or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as ShareWell development and administration.